Turbo Conquering Mega Eagle. Um, <clears throat> got another another fantastic video planned modifying a uh, really cheap axe. Uh, if you saw my last cheap axe video, it was um, basically involved hardening the original head. So I put the put the head um, in a forge and quenched it and then annealed it and the uh, the steel still got a bit harder. Like it wasn't wasn't amazingly hard, but it was a vast improvement on the original axe head. Today uh, I'm gonna try and hard face this axe. So I got some. This is Metro Hardcore 951.6 mil um, uh, hard facing wire. So you stick this for a welder, and um, and you know, um, and the weld produced is a steel chrome chrome carbide alloy um, is intended for um, what digger buckets like earth, earth mover buckets things like that um, it has phenomenal abrasion resistance it's completely non-machinable it's so hard uh, so it's got a, a on the Rockwell scale it's um, anywhere between 50 and 60 uh, HRC depending on how many how many layers of this stuff you put on um, Little surface cracks are normal, unfortunately, but I'm hoping that if I go, if I build up too much and then grind it back, I'll avoid the cracking. But I've um, been, been wondering what would happen if I did this for, for quite a long time. And the other thing I'm going to try on this axe head at the same time is is using a bit of Iroko for the handle because um, because these Chinese axe heads have a massive eye in them, so that they can use poor quality wood on the on the hafts on the, the shaft or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I figure I figure I'll be able to get away using something that's that's not hickory or ash. Um, the reason I like Iroko is because it has uh, like pretty much unrivaled um, weather resistance, you know. So it'll it'll go black, much darker anyway. Because this corner is obviously being exposed to the weather a lot more. Uh, but that nice dark colour is is quite blonde when it's um, when it's freshly worked. Uh, this is this is a split. Split in the timber, so I won't use this bit. But this is a good demonstration of how just how dark it is once it oxidizes. You know, so it looks nice, but it's greasy. You know, it's like a, it's like the girls you find in a in a Rochester nightclub. You know, that's why it gets its um, <clears throat> it's weatherproof, it's weather, weather resistance. From either way, uh, I'm gonna scallop out the head, uh, the 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 edge the edge of his head, um, so that the weld. Isn't uh, isn't isn't just in a straight line because that's gonna increase the chances of it just cracking off. So uh, first first thing I'll do is get rid of the handle, then scallop the head, get this hot before I weld it, uh, weld it when it's hot, so that the weld itself's not going to be shocked quite so badly. Um, so it happens. I don't know what they used to stick this handle in, but it smells amazing. Whoa. Just thought I'd take you on a little tour of the welding setup I've got going on here. Um, this welder, although it's quite a big one for uh, for home use, it, it is just a. Uh, hobby welder so what with 230 amp output which is about the most you can get out of a, a plug socket in the UK um, there's only meant to take 0 .8, 0 0.8 welding wire and as you can see I've managed to cram the uh, uh, 15 kilo 1.6 mil uh, hardcore wire in there in order to run it through the liner well I've had to take the liner out of the um, Euro torch and that's okay. Uh, well, I've had to drill a, a nozzle out. That's okay. No, no big deal. Um, however, because this stuff's so bloody whippy, you know, it's, 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 it doesn't want to bend. So the only way I can get this to run through the liner is to keep the keep it completely bloody straight. So uh, I've got my workpiece in the in the sack clamp. Just a little bit of bar there to test and earthed on the end because the earth clamp's shorter than the bloody the torch and then and am I having to weld with the whole thing you know stretched out like that perfectly straight otherwise the uh, 
the wire stops, then it gets burnt to the nozzle, and then I've got to make another nozzle. I put the camera on the floor down here, so uh, when you see how messy this weld is, uh, you, you got an idea of why, because, uh, yeah, as I explained, this is, this is my welding setup, really, really not ideal but it's the best the best I can do and the, the only way I'm, I seem to be able to get this to work is keeping it keeping it fucking straight. Okay, um, I started grinding. Uh, grinding is really, really slow going. I just thought, I just thought for a bit of fun, I'd get the tungsten carbide scribe. So this, this should actually be uh, tougher. It has marked it. Okay, I put a lot of force on that to give you an idea of how hard this is. Um, what we got the the axle itself. Probably won't be very hard at all, yeah. It's like buttery soft, you know. Uh, Hacksaw blade. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty soft in comparison to the axe head. What else can I scratch? Uh, hammer face. Cheaper hammer, shouldn't have a problem. Ugh. Just for comparison. Yeah, soft, soft. This stuff's hard, you know. Hey, I've got a fair bit of grinding ahead of me, so I'm going to get going. There we go, all finished. You can hardly tell the difference between this and a Grand Falls Brooks. Only kidding. Alright, I just finished off with a 9 inch grinder. I'm going to step down to the uh, little 4 inch grinder now. Whoop! I'll be perfectly honest with you. It's uh, it's looking a little bit, a little bit ropey at the minute. Uh, you can fucking pick this up. Um, I can't. It's, seriously, there's absolutely nothing I have will uh, will leave a nice finish on this. However, I have managed to get it incredibly bloody sharp. Like seriously sharp. You know, um, most metals roll over. You know, this normally when you. That's no effort to get it that sharp. Um, just no effort at all. I can shave my thumb look, my thumbnail. Yeah, we'll put a handle on it and see what it does.
If you're wondering about this axe that I've just been using to make the handle for this axe, this is the very successful effort of uh, hardening uh, hardening the head of a cheap axe. Uh, it's in the axes playlist on my channel. Um, works incredibly well. It's like one of my favourite favourite little axes now. Uh, it's really really hard hard steel. I've got a knife edge on it, and it's just perfect for uh, for whittling down little things like uh, other axe handles and that. You know. Give it a go, it's bloody amazing. So without even trying to use this thing, there's already been a couple of mishaps I suppose. First off, as I mentioned, there was a um, couple of cracks that appeared in the weld. Uh, can you see them? Whoop. Yeah, they're quite big. Um, and the manufacturer of what I did say that this is almost a certainty. It's just a matter of how how severe they are. Um, I didn't I didn't heat the head up. I reckon if I got the head red hot as I was welding it, which is going to be bloody tricky, especially as you saw how difficult it was for me to get my welder to operate with this wire. Um, I wouldn't get any cracking at all. You shouldn't do. I mean, it's only because the 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 head's expanding from the heat of the weld as the weld is contracting because it's bloody hot and it's cooling down um, that this that this cracking occurs. And it? it's quite quite common on welding, especially when you're either welding uh, what like high high strength metals or um, like this um, using hard facing or something. The other problem is uh, the uh, the palm swell, the end, you know, the, the swell for the palm, uh, it fell apart as I was um, tapping the head on. And I, I always leave it square and then cut it at an angle after I've got the head on. Uh, but still, uh, that was fine with hickory and ash, but um, it wasn't fine with the Aroko. Um, and I, I love a nice pronounced palm swell, so uh, already. Uh, the Aroko handle has a black mark against it, you know. But we'll um, we'll put them both through their paces and see how and if if and how they break. Uh, yep. So first off, we'll, we'll prove that it does actually work as an axe. Um, uh, it's not. But if I was going to use this axe, I would have put a better edge on it. Um, Certainly sharpish, as you can see, this is any softwoods, but uh, I can take the corners off, no problem. Uh, give the handle a bit of a go, I'll just swing it into this slump, two hands, and the handle is still alive, uh, nice and deep. Okay. Now, how am I going to test this? The most horrible way of doing it would be to stick a brick. Uh, this is a quality brick from the London Brick Company, actually made down the road in Peterborough. Uh, for once, I'm going to put goggles on. Right. I don't want to do this because this is actually quite a pretty axe now. I like the way the handle looks. Um, but in the interest of science and that, this hard facing needs to be tested thoroughly, so, sorry Axe, here we go. Fuck! <laughs> you know what? I don't know if those cracks have opened up at all, I don't think they have. Um, It has just on the edge of one of these cracks, it, a tiny bit of material has folded outwards and there's one tiny little nick but I just chopped a brick cleaning it off, 
I might do a couple more bricks or just uh, pulverise that brick a little bit more and see what happens. We'll go endways this time, yeah? Okay, we've lost a bit of axe now. Yeah, that was uh, that was where it's that was where it's already cracking. Uh, there should be one crack left. Okay, and we've got another crack appeared now. So there's a lot of porosity in my weld. Can you see that? The bubbly bit. I'm gonna gonna try and use this as an axe again. Yeah, I picked up a lump of timber where the, uh, the metal shipped away. But the rest of it's still still pretty sharp. It's dulled off a little bit. Um, what can I say? Uh, Iroko is a no for me. I love a I love a, a nice meaty palm as well. And if I can't have that, then the timber's no good. Uh, the hard facing. I'm definitely going to persevere with this, and I might even try uh, feeding the wire in. It, with, a, with a TIG welder, should be picking up the TIG fairly shortly, second hand one. Um, Aroko looks the tits, but what? You know, I'm going to sling this outside, and I suppose if I if I do another hard facing video, I'll let you know how the Aroko is done outside, because I can still use the axe. I'm going to leave this axe out in the rain, let it get all rusty and manky. And uh, and see what happens with the handle, whether or not it um, loosens off in the head. It's nice and tight. I did a pretty dodgy, dodgy hang on this, just because it was in a rush. I didn't want to do an amazing job, because because uh, I was going to do that to the to the poor axe. But yeah, interesting results. I think there's definitely a, definitely a, a bit of mileage in exploring hard facing on another axe. Hope you enjoyed mucking around, experimenting with a welder and an axe and some pretty timber uh, Turbo Conquering Meg Wheel check out my axe playlist, I, I'm always you know, just trying stuff at Curiosity uh, with axes and that um, subscribe to my channel, give it a like, see you later, bye